The economic freedom fighters have raised concerns over the state of the energy and agricultural sectors. Should there be a grid collapse? The farming sector is already faced with challenges amidst the ongoing power outages. The Red Berets are now calling for ESCOM to engage stakeholders and have a contingency plan should there be a crisis so that food supply chains are not affected. For more on this, we're joined by EFF Member of Parliament, Mutusi Muntwedi. A very good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time. Welcome to Newsroom Africa. In your calls for a nationwide contingency plan in the event of the grid collapsing, you're raising the alarm saying the agricultural sector is under threat. Talk to us about that. Oh, thank you very much uh, for having us uh, uh, today. Well, it is true that uh, when you refer to the Bill of Rights, the Bill of Rights spoke about uh, the right to food is enshrined in the Bill of Rights. Now, we're having a problem now where food availability and accessibility is a problem where food is not adequate to can cover. Now, uh, and I think it's important that we start by raising our concern. When we spoke of the grid collapse, uh, that ESCOM issued their statement last week saying that there's no such a thing as a grid collapse. We've seen grid collapse happening in Venezuela in 2019. We've seen that grid collapse where the capital city was without electricity for about three days and outer cities for a week and a half. Now, we need to emphasize as the EFF that uh, the most reliable, we emphasize as the EFF that the most sustainable solution is to restore the functionality of the national electricity grid uh, uh, and completely eradicate load shedding. Now, the current load shedding really affects farmers. We go to instances where you have your abattoirs. Abattoirs are slaughtering less than half of what they used to slaughter in a day, which then directly affects food security. You have a, a, a farmer's unable to deliver food to up, uh, 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 the meat or any uh, meat to abattoirs for them to process. And that also creates a high input cost on farmers because some farmers have to sit with a, a, a meat that is ready to be delivered to abattoirs, but because there's no capacity, they are unable to deliver meat there, which ultimately end up losing uh, grading. And it's a, it's a serious, serious, serious problem that we see mm -hmm. ourselves actually at the moment. So with all the challenges that, that you've mentioned uh, that farmers are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, what do you then believe to be the ripple effect of uh, those challenges, especially on low-income earners? Well, it's, it's, it, it will really create a lot of uh, problems for the country. We find a situation where we'll see a lot of disinvestment in agriculture because we need investment in the sector where our people should actually be able to contribute into food security. So we are likely to see no investment coming into the sector because of uh, it is not sustainable now as a result of this uh, load shedding that we see having. Now, as the EFF, we actually have a very few proposals that we would want to make. Uh, we see that uh, on the 24th of February, the department uh, presented into the portfolio committee that they had a stakeholder engagement, but uh, they appoint experts who are not in the sector, who would not be able to bring solutions that the sector require in order for agriculture as a sector to be able to continue to be resilient. Agriculture was the only sector that remained resilient during the COVID-19. But uh, we see the sector going down now as a result of failure by the ANC government to ensure that it really focuses and invests a lot of money into seeing to it that we provide alternative sources of energy. We have uh, uh, areas where crops are dependent on the uh, 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 palms, masaran, for you to water your palm, uh, 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 the crops, we see that the uh, production and the yield has actually been decreasing. So, so uh, on, that, on that note, what kind of urgent collaboration do you believe is needed to then protect South Africa's food security? Who, who are the talking heads okay. that should come together to find solutions? Okay, no, no, yeah, Th thanks for that question. While we still believe and maintain as the EFM that through a stable electricity supply from ESCOM. That's what we actually solve the problem. But now that we're having this problem that we're having, I want to say we need to have a, 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 a stakeholder engagement where we need to bring all stakeholders that are affected by the problem of electricity crisis because those stakeholders, after all of them coming in here, we should be able to agree in terms of mapping a way forward, in terms of what is it that needs to be done now, and also going forward in terms of if, if we can have that uh, a grid collapse. Now, we have uh, Tiger Brand, which is one of the largest food producers. It operates about 44 manufacturing sites across the country.
country and their productivity is affected severely as a result of this uh, load shedding. Now, they are also saying, Chaka Brands, they want to source 65% of their manufacturing site electricity to call, uh, 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 they want to source about 65% of the manufacturing site requirements across South Africa from sustainable energy solutions. So it means these stakeholders do have what is it that must happen. We only need to bring them on board uh, for government to bring these stakeholders on board for them to really see what is it that can actually be done. Now, we, we, we have a, a poultry sector, for example, also that cut over more than 10 million day old chicks. And, and that, that also creates to high unemployment rate because these companies are starting to retrench people. Because if you cull 10 million chicks, it's, it actually opens up a way for South Africa to import, you know, this dumped chicken from the U.S. to bring it into the country, which would create more problems for, uh, for, 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 for our people. Uh-huh. So it's a serious, serious challenges that we actually are being faced with as the, as, as the country. And the, so that is the first solution that we need to have that discussion with all of us. Now, the other proposal, which on the immediate will work, that we are bringing as the EFF on the table is that as we need to to invest into a targeted microgrid, which will not be connected directly to the national grid of ESCOM, and those microgrid will have the po- potential to produce between 500 to 1,000 megawatts of electricity, and then we target, we shift them to focus in such sectors where they need electricity. But the poultry sector, that is unable to function. We've got the abattoirs that need electricity to produce, to deal with, to, 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 to produce, to slaughter, mm-hmm. and also for transport, they do need electricity. So, 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 so with this the call that you're making uh, and the solutions that you're putting on the table, what um, interventions are you going to put in place to ensure that this does eventually happen, that uh, there really is a nationwide contingency plan in place You've, you, you've spoken about it, really, you, you should be spearheading it. Yes. What, what we will be doing with, with regards to that one is that uh, through platforms that we have in Parliament as the EFF, we need to really advocate for such to happen because uh, most of the time, departments solicit views from people that are not directly in the sector. They appoint people at a cost. Now, one, we need to reduce the cost of appointing these uh, so-called experts in the sector who are not actually directly involved with what is happening on the ground. So we will advocate that we need to have that stakeholder engagement where you have your, your Ken Growers Association, where you've got your poultry association, that they must come and be part of that discussion. We need to have Tiger Brands to come on board and all these other producers that are directly affected by electricity, that we must bring them on board so that we, so that is the first thing that we must do as an organization. And the other thing that we need to do is as as we, we spoke, microgrid, uh, or oh, we need to have such sectors where ESCOM should not actually be giving them load shedding so that we allow them to continue in the important work that they are doing, which is to make sure that there's food security. So through our parliament process, we'll try to advocate and push for such interventions to happen. Uh, uh, some of these would, ra- would range in the medium to long term, term but uh, as the EFF will Definitely do that. But the most important people who should be doing these things are your Tiger Brands and any other players that are in the sector because uh-huh. it's them that are affected, it's them that really know what is it that will actually be able to 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 uh, deal with this problem that you're facing of load shedding. Mm, very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for weighing in on the discussion with Tusi Mondwedi, EFF Member of Parliament.